Well, I'd like to commence with today's main event, uh, a discussion with the world-renowned manga artist Ano Moyoko. Uh, let me begin by welcoming all of you today. Um, I hope you were able to greet Ms. Ano and to get a book signed by her. Um, and like I said, if you uh, weren't able to, there will be another opportunity after the talk. My name is Stephen Salel, and I am the Robert F. Lange Foundation Assistant Curator of Japanese Art here at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Today's events are held in conjunction with the exhibition Modern Love, 20th Century Japanese Erotic Art, which will be on view here at the museum until March 15th and which was co-curated by Sean Eichmann, the curator of Asian art, and me. Like the exhibition, I wanted to inform you, the contents of this morning's discussion um, is intended for an adult audience. Um, there will be some aspects of the uh, discussion that are sexual in nature, and um, it is, in general, uh, not intended for viewers below the age of 18, nor is it intended uh, for visitors who find the topic of sexuality to be disturbing. One section of the exhibition concerns the topic of prostitution as it is depicted in contemporary Japanese art. Here, we are proud to present the artwork of Ms. Ano Moyoko, including four original full-color paintings that she produced for her masterpiece, Sakuran, which describes the lives of courtesans living in the Yoshiwara brothel district during the 19th century. And it describes that lifestyle not only with stunning graphic design, but also with a compelling narrative. Alongside the original artwork, we present the manga itself in both tonkobon paperback format as well as a digital version using the iPad, which is displayed here on the left, a visitor is welcome to read Sakuran literally from cover to cover. And don't worry, the security guards aren't going to kick you out of the gallery if you spend a while reading the book. Uh, Modern Love is the third and final installment in a series of exhibitions that deal with the historical development of Japanese erotic art since the 17th century. And although this concluding show has a distinctively modern feel to it, in many ways, Ms. Ano's work harkens back to the 17th and 18th century woodblock prints that we displayed two years ago in the first exhibition, Arts of the Bedchamber, Japanese Shunga. Both stylistically and thematically, Ms. Ano follows in the footsteps of the pioneers of ukiyo-e printmaking, such as Isoda Koryusai, Kitagawa Utamaro, Sugiwara Jihei, and Utagawa Toyokuni I. It would be unfair, however, for me to merely frame Ms. Ano's oeuvre in the context of the Yoshiwara because she works more broadly in the genre of Jose manga, which discusses the daily lives of adult women. In my opinion, this genre, again, arises from a long, illustrious tradition in the field of ukiyo-e. This tradition is typically referred to as bijinga, portraits of beautiful women. But do not let that emphasis on beauty obscure the fact that 
In addition to being attractive, these women are represented as real human beings who experience the same emotions as you and I. Jealousy, affection, wistful yearning, reckless abandon, and above all, pride and self-confidence. In the early 20th century, the tradition of Bijinga portraits continued in the genre of kuchie, frontispiece illustrations for romance novels that were published at that time. And here again, the models were not merely presented as objects of beauty, but as educated, intellectually curious individuals who struggled to survive daily hardships and to preserve their sense of honor. This tradition of honoring women can clearly be recognized in the work of Ms. Ano Moyoko. At times, she focuses on the subject of feminine beauty in all of its many forms. And she reminds us how truly graceful human beings can be. But Ms. Ano is much more of a storyteller, or as much of a storyteller, as she is a visual artist. And it is often the struggle that these women endure that bestow upon them such a sense of grace. The story Sakaran describes a young girl who is sold into indentured servitude and forced to endure an environment that often fills her heart with terror and rage. As she gradually matures, she, she becomes the master of her domain. But Ms. Ano reminds us that even in moments when we radiate confidence, we are, as human beings, still very vulnerable. In her contemporary drama, entitled In Clothes Called Fat, Ms. Ano takes the tradition of Bijinga and turns it on its head. What precisely is it that makes us beautiful? Who decides what constitutes beauty? And what should we do if our natural bodies don't conform to those standards? At the dawn of the 21st century, how different are we, she asks, from the characters of Sakharan, who, under the strain of a merciless patriarchy, attack one another in order to survive. In this world, no one's honor remains unscathed. Not the old man with the fetish for overweight women, nor the boyfriend whose low self-esteem is mistaken for moral decency, nor even the protagonist herself, whose dream of attractiveness and social acceptance leads her to acts of desperation. As her self-abuse is rewarded with praise from those around her, she begins to externalize her cruelty. Until, at last, we are forced to wonder if perhaps that old man who finds overweight women to be attractive might in fact be the sanest character of them all. 
In addition to drawing attention to these deeply rooted social problems that seriously affect women, Ms. Ano has done something rather radical. She has embarked upon ways in which to help remedy these problems. Through publications such as Beauty Magazine Wonder, which offers advice on physical and spiritual health, she teaches women how to look their best. She counsels women about how to take better care of themselves. And she reminds women of their importance as human beings and as individuals who deserve to have a little bit of fun now and then. And it is in the spirit of the, that last theme, the importance of whimsy, that Ms. Ano wrote the lighthearted comedy Insufficient Direction, which discusses her marriage to the film director Ano Hideaki. If we do not completely conform to the expectations of the world in which we live, she says, then let us pity the world, not ourselves. Ms. Ano proudly presents herself, and even more so her husband, as otaku aficionados of popular icons such as Ultraman and Kamen Rider. Mr. Ano strives for physical beauty, but he doesn't take it too seriously. He's comfortable with the fact that human bodies have their own distinct aromas. And while she presents herself as a stern critic of her husband, we realize from the relaxed drawing style that she employs here that in many ways, Ms. Ano herself embraces that same enlightened view of the world and her importance within it. This is merely a fraction of Ms. Ano Moyoko's output over, over the past few years, but I hope it offers a bit of insight into the artistic and emotional range of her work, and I hope it communicates the pride that we here at the Honolulu Museum of Art feel about her willingness to participate in our current exhibition, Modern Love, 20th Century Japanese Erotic Art. At this time, let me thank all the organizations and individuals who have made today's events possible, including film curator Abby Algar, theater manager Taylor Chang, communications director Lisa Griffith, art school director Vince Hazen, art instructor Tara Tamayori, museum director Stefan Yost, the Robert F. Lange Foundation, Vertical Incorporated, Miss Ano's American publisher, the folks at KawaiiCon, Hawaii's annual convention on Japanese popular culture, and Cork Incorporated, a Tokyo-based artist management company that represents Mizano. For now, without further ado, allow me to introduce today's guest of honor. Please join me in welcoming both Ms. Ano Moyoko, as well as Mr. Terada Yuma, co-owner of Cork Incorporated, who will be kindly assisting with interpretation throughout the discussion. So we have uh, a few questions here. Um, thanks so much for coming to visit us here in, in Honolulu. Um, I hope you're enjoying your stay here. Um, and I was wondering about your impressions of Hawaii. We flew in yesterday. And then, do you want me to go as we do? Or we'll play by ear. Sure. First place we went to yesterday was Kailua Beach. We drove there. 
ずっとここにいたいなって思って。あのーすごくのんびりしてしまって、仕事できたことを忘れてしまいました。私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、はい。そうですねあの2000年ぐらいからうんでも一番最初は私が覚えてるのは、mm. あれは、うん、もうちょっと前かな2000年よりもうちょっと前であのニューヨークに行った時に Maybe a few years prior to 2000, when she was in New York. あの本屋さんにそれは本当に日本とか漫画とかあのアメリカンコミックの専門の本屋さんだったんですけど普通にそのアメコミを買おうと思って入ったら自分のコミックスが売ってたのにびっくりしました。Mm-hmm. She wanted to pick up some American comics for her for her work related s だから漫画あのあとその頃ちょうど多分2000年ぐらいになると空港でフランスの空港でやっぱり本屋さんで、airports in France where she was visiting。とあのワンピースとかナナとか、すごい漫画が being sold at French airports like titles like One Piece and Nana。そうそう矢沢さんのね。by 矢沢さん。あのちょっとくそうと思いました。and she was like why aren't my stuff there <笑>。でもすごいなと思った。同時にその。空港の本屋さんってたくさんの人が買うものしか置かないから、うん、だからその頃は漫画家どうしてもあの日本の本屋さんだったらやっぱり自分の本いっぱい置いてほしいって思うけど海外の本屋さんだとそれだけ読んでくれる人がたくさん増えてるんだっていう方を喜んでいます。そうですね。だからあの、うん、まあ本屋さんとかもそうだし、うん、本屋さんとかも
um, I, um, that, that boom in popularity around 2000 or, or shortly before 2000 was one important event in the manga industry. Another one happened about seven or eight years later, I think. Um, one factor in that second event was the uh, economic recession. And another factor was the popularity of the internet and the way that manga readers began to distribute uh, unauthorized translations of manga, um, scanlations, uh, through the internet. Uh, some people talk about uh, computers and digitization as being uh, the future for manga. But I also know that a lot of manga artists and manga publishers find it to be a very serious problem. Mm -mm. And I was wondering about your thoughts on this. I think overall, basically, she thinks that it's a good thing, the digitization process. The cost of production for manga is extremely low. It's about one talented manga artist in a room with pen and paper. It's one of the few genres of entertainment that can be consumed um, even in times of recessions. ただ I imagine that it's kind of a double-edged sword because in some ways, like you said, um, it's important to get compensated for your time and your hard work. And um, at the same time, you want people throughout the world, um, people of different languages, uh, to to learn about and appreciate your work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, I imagine that uh, nowadays, um, with the the help of um, Quark Incorporated and with Vertical Incorporated, that you are um, doing a wonderful job in in distributing your work in various languages. Um, sorry, let me, th those were some kind of um, large abstract questions here and I um, wanted to get to something a little bit more concrete. Um, in, in the exhibition Modern Love here, we're exhibiting your work Sakuran. And it's an amazing story uh, for me, the most impressive thing about it is what we are able to learn about the Yoshiwara brothel district during the 19th century. The, the, uh, the views of the, um, the buildings, the architecture, the customs uh, that um, uh, were held in that district, the relationships of the women who lived there, uh, 
Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, how did you go about researching all of this um, information that seems to um, be um, such a long time ago? You, you present it so clearly like it's happening, like it's daily life right now. Mm, so the, truth is that, <laughs> the truth is that she didn't really do that much research. For example, the architecture in the buildings. The technique for doing ukiyo-e uh, back in the 19th century and manga today is quite different. だけどそのまどの形とか屋根の形をどうやって描くかっていうとえっと現代の建物を写真で撮って室内とかをそれにその細かいディティールを当てはめて自分たちで細胞性するっていうやり方をしてました。in terms of how to do um, indoor architecture, um, she would go take photographs of contemporary architecture uh, and then look at how that should be drawn in contemporary drawing and then apply uh, elements of old architecture into that, those photographs in order to reproduce what it would have looked like back in the days. Were there any sources of inspiration for, uh, for this manga? Yes. Ah. Yes. She found in a used bookstore. あのね。ちょうどその江戸時代の吉原にお客さんで来てた男の人たちが、えっと、書いた俳句みたいな、千流でわかるか。A book of senryu, which is a Jap uh, form of Japanese traditional poetry, which was written by uh, men who were visiting the brothels uh, back in the Edo period. There was a collection of those poetry which she found uh, in an old used bookstore, which she found to be quite inspirational. しかも芸術的じゃなくてただそう思っただけっていう。It was sort of everyday people visiting. It wasn't any anything artistic, but it was a very candid sort of um uh, reflection on what it was like to visit the Yoshiwara in the 19th century. それはもうすごく生の声だったんで。例えばその女の人を待ってる間に。So the men would talk about something like あの、ちっちゃい働いてる女の子が why they wait uh, to meet the courtesan of their choice. They would find the little girls uh, working at the brothel, the counters, and uh, the girls are being worked so hard that they're kind of falling asleep. And men would make observations about that kind of everyday life at the brothels, uh, which she found to be quite interesting. There's a strict um, hierarchy system within the Yoshiwara. And so men would sometimes observe that the courtesans uh, would kind of scold uh, the smaller girls that are um, not yet taking in customers. And you would observe little girls kind of crying in the corner because she's been scolded. And that kind of observation that are very live and raw uh, were all in those uh, poetry written in the days. So it really wasn't about just visiting and having sex and leaving, but the men would kind of observe the everyday lives of what's going on in the brothels and that kind of um, anecdotal evidence in the poetry uh, she found sort of a segue into writing a story. And reading that book of poetry uh, was, was a very visual experience for her, so she could almost see uh, Yoshiwara in, 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 its, in its sort of heydays, and so she would often refer back to that book while she was writing, uh, working on Sakura. And now, thank you, thanks to Sakura, now we can all see it. <laughs> 
視覚的に吉原を見ることができますね。私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、Uh, looking at the Yoshiwara district and imagining the experiences that the women living there had. So,、uh, the, the, the work that you did for Sakuran、um, is a wonderful extension、um, of what we've been discussing in these、uh, exhibitions about. Uh, the Japanese sexual culture. In, in,、um, in particular, I was really impressed by how you were、uh, helping us to see the experience from a woman's point of view. And with your other books that I mentioned here, Uh, you uh, talk about contemporary social issues, again from a woman's point of view. Um, in, in, in particular, um, in um, works like In Clothes Called Fat,、uh, you, you talk very honestly about these serious social problems. Uh, the, these ways in which contemporary women、um, are struggling. And d-、um, I was wondering, do you think that this might be one of the strengths of Jose Manga? To, to be able to talk very honestly about those sorts of women's issues? うんそうですねあのそんなにないと思います<笑>他,に他にはあんまりないかなと I think that's, that's、uh, certainly true there aren't、uh, that many other mediums within Japanese society that would allow females to express such, such issues in a straightforward way 私がその、えー、とずっと連載してた「フィール・ヤング」っていう雑誌においてはそういうテーマに取り組んでる作家さんが結構There is a manga magazine in Japan called Feel Young,、mm-hmm. uh, on which uh, Moyoko um, has, has been doing serializations over the years. And there are a lot of manga artists who write for Feel Young that actually do tackle these problems、uh, in a very candid way.、Mm. Um, recently,、uh, here at the museum, we held a, a, a discussion with Uh, some artists about,、uh, about the exhibition and、uh, about the topic of censorship. And during that discussion, we realized that because manga is、uh, often considered to be、uh, a form of、um, popular art rather than fine art. Um, that it isn't regulated、um, and censored in the sort of way that、um, large art exhibitions in museums are. And, and for that reason, it seems that manga artists have more freedom. To talk about political issues and social issues. Yes, that's precisely true. Do you,、uh, do, do you think that difference between the, the, the way that the public sees、uh, fine art and the way it sees manga, do you think that's a problem? Or do you think that's a good thing? So, I think that's a good thing. 
あの問題でもあるしだからこそ気楽にかけるっていうところがそれを隠れみのにしてあの鋭いことを言うことができる部分もあるし漫画だから多めに見られてる部分もあると思います。There is an aspect where it's、uh, problematic that manga is still regarded to be、um, not as high art as, as you mentioned in Japanese society. But、uh, so、oftentimes that precisely gives、um, manga artists、um, sort of、um, safety to express themselves、um, of、um, social and political issues that may not be able to be voiced in, in different、um, other media s as well. And the manga kind of chi wa, n i h o n y t ののでこの間も私は漫画家の友達とあの3人でご飯食べてた時に<笑>みんなあの小説家の人は対談とかあるともう車で編集者の人がいっぱいくっついて。すごいもう大名行列みたいにしてるのに私たちはコンビニ弁当を与えられて食べとけって言われる。They were talking about how when novelists are invited to give talks,、um, cars come pick them up, and there's a lot of entourage that goes with、um, hosting, hosting a novelist at an event. But when, with, with the manga artist, like she doesn't get sent cars, and you know, like little bento boxes she gets fed at lunch,、uh, whereas the novelist gets fed、um, much better. 全然扱いが違います。So, so the way the publishers and the public deal With novelists and manga artists is quite different in Japan. Well, I am happy to say that things are changing, at least at our museum here. <laughs> first, of all, first of all, you won't be getting a bento for lunch. <laughs> We promise something a little bit better. <laughs> She's very happy to hear. <laughs>、uh, but, but also, we,、uh, our, our, our museum here、uh, has、uh, a very large collection of、uh, ukiyo-e woodblock prints. <laughs> And we Uh, at the same time, we're very interested in contemporary Japanese art. And, and so we、uh, are interested in, for the, the, the coming years, in、uh, focusing our attention on contemporary Japanese manga as a modern extension of ukiyo-e. And, and、um, looking at works such as yours as fine art. And that's、uh, fine, fine art in capital letters and italics and little squiggly marks around it. そんな扱いを受けるのは初めてです。First time she's been treated so well. Well, we'll do our best. Anyways, I just want to say that it's, it's really a, a pleasure to be able to, to talk to you like this. Could you tell us a little bit about your inspiration? Uh, for becoming an artist when you were younger? What sort of manga did you read and which artist did you enjoy? I was a very young man. I was a very young man. I was a very young man. So, the first time she thought of that she wants to become a manga artist, she was in third grade in elementary school.、ね、Her uncle is actually a manga artist. So, in the house where she grew up, there was a lot of、um, art drawing material kind of lying around everywhere. So, in the house where she grew up, there was a lot of art drawing material kind of lying around everywhere. 
リアルな職業としてずっと。It was an environment where she could feel the manga artist as a profession is something that is real and tangible. あったのとあと、まあ、自分が本当に絵を描くのが好きだったのであのでも小さい本当に小さい時はあのお花屋さんになりたいとか思ってたんですけど、ぼんやりした夢ですけど。ぼんやりした夢ですけど。ぼんやりした夢ですけど。ぼんやりした夢ですけど。ぼんやりした夢ですけど。ぼんやりした夢ですけど。んですね。なんか自分が何になりたいのかが分かったっていう感じで。その前、小学校の低学年の時からもう自分で本を作ってストーリー漫画を書いていたので。最初はあのオリジナルキャラクターじゃなくてあのサンリオって。パティジミーというキャラクターがいて、そのの人たち、私が覚えているのは小学校1年生の時に作ったのパティジミーの大混乱という題名の。She did a manga called Patty and Jimmy and their big confusion. In her notebook. 何が起こるのかちょっとよくわからないんだけどとにかくみんなが大慌てするっていう話でしたね。There wasn't a substantial plot to,、uh, to speak of, but there was a lot of confusion going on, was the、uh, essence of the, the manga that she drew. でその後次に自分でオリジナルのキャラクターで作ったのはあのシマリス君っていう。で、最初にシマリス君を作ったのはシマリス君。ちっちゃい日本のリスそういうのを書いててで,でも、うん、小学生の、うん、10歳ぐらいからもう今みたいにこう普通にコマ終わったそれまではどっちかというと絵本みたいなものだったけど。Until age 10, like, her stuff、uh, looked like、uh, children's picture books. But you know, starting from, from around age 10, she started doing、um, uh, the, the manga format, which consists of、um, separate blocks within, within the page.、Uh, to, it's a particular form of storytelling. She was also a prolific manga reader. キャンディーキャンディーとかあの私がシュガシュガルーンを書いてた「仲良し」っていう雑誌とかも「キャンディーキャンディー」which was on、um, a magazine called「仲良し」for which she would later、um, do the series called「シュガシュガルーン」読んでたしあとは「チャンピオン」とか「サンデー」とか男の子向けの「シュガシュガルーン」とか「チャンピオン」とか「サンデー」which are for, for boys あとそのうちのおじがのとこに送られてくる漫画娯楽とかアクションとかそれちょっといや,いやらしい HK のその頃はあのモンキーパンチの連載があった。There are more mature manga magazines like manga 娯楽 and action which her uncle would receive in the mail for work related stuff and、uh, to be honest there were some pornographic references in there as well but、um, at that time the manga artist モンキーパンチ translated. ちょっと難しいんでこれは何かというと、えっと、今、ちょうど、えっと、これは、あの、桜のと、まあ、姉妹というか、あの、まあ、お兄弟が
同じテーマを扱っているような部分があるんですけども。20世紀初頭の、えー、とパリが舞台で takes place at the beginning of the 20th century in Paris. ただ、サクランと違うのはあの、ここに出てくる女性は、若い頃からその仕事をしているわけじゃなくて、もうちょっと。くたびれてきている人っていう。But the big difference with Sakuran is that unlike the girls in Sakuran who、um, are brought to the brothels when they're quite young and they come of age within the brothel context,、mm-hmm. these women grow up elsewhere and then they are sort of tired of life and then they end up at the brothels.、Um, is, is a big difference in her view.、うん、あの先ほど Sakuran を女性の目線で描かれてるっておっしゃってましたけども。You mentioned earlier, Stephen, that、um, Sakuran is portrayed from a female point of view. それは私もあの自分で調べたり書いたりしてるときに思ったんですけどなんでそういうものが少ないかっていうと資料としても全然残ってなくてダイアリーとかもなんでかっていうとそ,のそもそもそういうとこで働く人タイプの女性ってそうやって文章を書いたりする感じの人が少ないんですね。And it's true, as Stephen said, that、um, there are very few ref-、um, works About Yoshiwara, that's written from a female point of view. And she was doing、um, research when trying to write Sakuran, and she was able to find very few、um, source material written by females because women who would work in these places were often illiterate and could not write、uh, about their lives. And it was e- difficult even to find、um, diaries by them. <laughs> She imagines that you know, their lives were so full and exhausting that, she, they, that the women often could not find the time or the energy to write、uh, their emotions down. Uh, she, she writes about her own life,、uh, yeah. takes sort of control over a narrative, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to, to have a voice、um, for, for a woman living in, that, in, in those circumstances, to have a voice,、um, it's a、um, wonderful sense of power, I imagine. <laughs> And,、uh, Especially since the、um, sex industry that you write about, both in, in this book and in Sakuran, to some extent、um, exists、uh, throughout the world today. It's an issue that um, still um, needs a lot of attention. So, you have a book called Tomotetanoa. 19 20世紀のパリっていうふうにはしてるんですけども今の東京も、えー、と若い女の子が、うん、本当に自分が欲しいものを買ったりとかそういうだけじゃなくてもう生活がかかってるとかそういう理由であの非合法で売春してる人たちがすごくいっぱいいるので。And I think you're right,、uh, precisely right, Stephen.、Um, even though Memoirs of a Morse Gentleman takes place in late 20th century、um, Paris, the, one of the reasons that she decided to do another piece of, of, in, in the brothel is that in contemporary Tokyo,、uh, in Japan, there are women who、um, uh, practice in that sort of trade,、um, sometimes because they, simply because of materialism and commercialism, they want to buy things. But you know, in, in many cases, because they're destitute enough that、uh, they need to do so to support themselves.、うん、あの時代物の作品を書くときに、割と多くの作家さんが使う手法ではあるんですけど、その現代社会の問題を
違う時代に転写して描くっていう。It's a technique that a lot of manga artists use when they do、um, period pieces is to、um, write about contemporary、uh, issues by using、um, period backgrounds, which kind of sometimes make it, make it easier to, to portray、uh, contemporary society. その現代の問題そのまま描いてしまうとその分すごくクリアにはなるんですけど、うん、読んだ人が全員必ずしも楽しいと言い切れないから。Portraying contemporary life and problems from contemporary life in a contemporary setting、uh, makes the issues more explicit, which might be a good thing, but there are always、um, a portion of society that would not enjoy、uh, such portrayals. And so using peri- periodic backgrounds in different territories、uh, is, is a way that manga artists、uh, often use to tackle contemporary issues. Mm-hmm. I, I understand completely that that has been a very big challenge for us in this、uh, current exhibition because we are dealing with photographs and、uh, works of contemporary art that feel very real. Um, another project that you're working on, I believe, is Kimono Girls. Just trying to remember why, why, she, why she did these pieces. This is not a serialization, it's just a series of illustrations that she did. I see. But quite recent. She used to live in、um, Kamakura, which is an ancient capital of Japan from the 12th century. Fairly accessible from Tokyo, but lots of、um, ancient shrines and whatnot in Kamakura. Fairly accessible from Tokyo, but lots of ancient shrines and whatnot in Kamakura. どんどん There's a problem in Kamakura where the old buildings, the beautiful architecture, is being torn down for redevelopment.、ね、And so,、um, Kyoto、uh, is the, the other, obviously, the、uh, big ancient capital which is being preser- preserved quite well. But the、um, uh, sense of preservation has not kind of re- found its way into Kamakura, which is a shame. それでその鎌倉春秋っていう鎌倉市の商店街とか駅でだけ売ってる小さいあのマガジンがあって。And there's a small、um, local periodical called 鎌倉春秋 which、uh, is sold only locally at、um, near the train station and the,、um, the commercial district of 鎌倉。うん、でそこにあの街を歩いててこの古いお家が残ってたのにもう取り壊されてしまう来週この家なくなっちゃうんだなと思ったのそ,その街並みを消したくないから絵に描いて残すことにしたんです。So she would be walking around the, the city of Kamakura and、um, come across these beautiful pieces of architecture that、uh, she feared would be lost forever if she, would, she kind of allowed、uh, them to be torn down. And so she took it upon herself to kind of portray them. Um, as an artist. So that's how this started as a series. But she's not an architecture artist, so <laughs> she thought we might as well、um, throw in a few girls in the, in the drawings as well. And so, the old city, 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 So she decided to contrast the,、um, the scenery of the ancient capital with contemporary、uh, women who would be standing with、um, beautiful kimono, and the contrast she thought would be, would be quite astonishing. So she did these paint drawings for、um, uh, the magazine Kamakura Shunju. They're, they're wonderful. Thank you.、Um, I believe we are. Uh, running low on time here. I'm, my, my, my phone was rebelling against me, so I had to throw it away.、Um, but、uh, five to twelve, thank you, Sean.、Uh, 
Uh, um, let me say that um, in later on this uh, this afternoon at one o'clock over at the art school, we'll be doing uh, a drawing demonstration um, with Ms. Anno, and I believe that th these are some um, the sketches that uh, she ha has posted online, um, some examples of some of, of the work that she might be doing during that drawing demonstration. Um, let me uh, uh, bring this uh, Q&A to a close so that we can get back to the book signing. But one more uh, question that I'm just dying to know about. The asteroid. <laughs> in, in April 6 of 2012, scientists named an asteroid that's located between Mars and Jupiter. They named the asteroid Moyoko Ano. <laughs> And, and I was wondering if you could tell us how, how does one go about getting an asteroid named after herself? <laughs> So the way it came about is um, prior to that naming, there was another asteroid that was named after her husband, uh, Hideaki Anno. And that came about because his, um, his friend from high school works uh, at, a, at an observatory. And they used to be friends uh, from the high school obs uh, planetary observation club. And, and that friend did actually discover an asteroid. Uh, and picked her husband's name, uh, Hideaki Anno, mm -hmm. as the name for the newly uh, discovered asteroid. So that came first, and she was quite impressed with that. But she thought that that had nothing to do with her herself. But then one day, she heard that another asteroid had, had been named after her. So one, one more step in the name of gender equality. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we will definitely need to uh, uh, go to our local uh, observatory and, and try to find your asteroid sometime. Uh, no, please go look at it. <laughs> she has no idea where it is. <laughs> We'll let you know if we find it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sitting down and, and talking with us here this morning. Um, I will let you get back to uh, signing a few more books. Um, and thank all of you for coming today. Um, we really appreciate your support here. And uh, let us give a, a big round of applause to Ms. Anna.